Well, hello everybody. Uh, this is a drone video of the Kennecott Copper Mine, otherwise known as the <clears throat> Bingham Canyon Mine in the Salt Lake Valley area, uh, in the Ochre Mountains of the Salt Lake Valley area. And you can see in the upper left corner the uh, southern end of the Great Salt Lake to kind of give you a perspective. This canyon, <clears throat> or this mine, is about 22, 23 miles from downtown Salt Lake City. And again, it's on the, this, the west side of the Salt Lake Valley. Now, um, because of the size of this mine, uh, even these very large construction vehicles, these heavy, massive um, haul trucks, dump trucks, which are about 50 feet long, 15 meters long, and can haul something on the order of 300 tons of material. Uh, even at that size, in this scale, they look like toys. And because they're so large and, you know, the scale is so large, you, um, I, I've sped up the video by a factor of two just to make it more visible that they're actually moving. <clears throat> now, one of the things that d uh, makes this place kind of stand out is that it is, in fact, the largest man-made excavation on the planet and also the deepest. It's four to five kilometers across, kilometers across and more than a kilometer deep. So if you were to put the Burj Khalifa at the bottom of this um, mine, it, w it would not appear above the top of it. Uh, looking at the, um, these dirt roads, and they're, they've got to be like 40 or 50 meters wide to account for the two-way traffic of these he very heavy trucks. Um, but additionally, additionally, many of these trucks are coming from the bottom where they get filled up and they're bringing the, uh, the soil, the ore, all the way to the top. And then I guess a conveyor system takes it to the uh, various refining act, uh, places. <clears throat> so these trucks have to cart 300 something tons up over a thousand meters, more than 3,000 feet. And they do that all day long. This is a 24 hour operation. So, you know, the amount of um, work that these trucks have to do is pretty remarkable. They have I think somewhere in the vicinity of 3,500 horsepower, and they have to use probably pretty near all of that to climb these very steep um, dirt roads. You'll see in the, the kind of foreground center right, there's a uh, kind of a diagonal stretch of the road. It starts at a kind of a hairpin and then goes up and to the right. You notice how steep that is, and how slowly they're climbing. So they're climbing loaded and coming back down empty. And again, the video here is sped up by a factor of two to make it a little easier to see the actual motion. So this mine um, is principally a copper mine. And in fact, this mine has produced more copper than any mine in the world. And to this day, uh, is like the second largest producer of copper in the United States. <clears throat> but like all of these mines, they may have a principal material such as copper that they're um, w working to extract. But of course, they're not going to pass up the opportunity to uh, harvest whatever gold and silver and platinum they get as well. So it's an expensive operation. Each of those trucks, and I think there's just the dump trucks now, um, there's something like 60 or 70 of them, and they're like $3 million each. So there's a couple hundred million dollars just in the, the, the haul trucks. 
and that's not counting the shovels or the blasting uh, drilling rigs, the other support vehicles, the conveyor systems, and all of the other stuff that goes with it. Uh, by way of comparison, um, the Meteor Crater in Arizona, otherwise known as Barringer Crater, which was formed by a uh, asteroidal impact about 50,000 years ago, um, formed a crater, the most pristine impact crater on Earth, that's about 1.2 kilometers across and about 170 meters deep. The volume of material removed from this copper mine is about 50 times greater. And the estimate for the energy of the impact at the Barringer Crater, Meteor Crater, was anywhere from about 1 megaton to about 10 meg megatons. So uh, let's say 5 megatons. This would put the amount of energy required to excavate this hole at approximately 250 megatons. Uh, I, this mine has been in operation since I think um, 1906, so about 124 years. <clears throat> and uh, to be able to continue working here, they're looking at extending the operations for another 20 or so years. The um, plan is to uh, can extend the excavation to the south, which would be the right-hand side of the video as we're, we're looking at it here. So um, this was done again with a drone and this first flight I'm kind of backing up to the end of the first flight and then I have a, a second flight um, as well. So this kind of gives you a perspective. And almost directly ahead, a little bit left of center, is Salt Lake City itself. All right, so this is the second flight. Um, I moved in a little bit closer to get a little different perspective on it. And again, at the bottom, which is like 1,200 meters below the top, um, the vehicles are beginning their journey up, up the, um, these haul roads. And I think they have to have something on the order of 15 or 20 kilometers a road just just to be able to make the the, uh, the gradient for climbing out of there manageable. And you can see on the, the left hand side there, there was a couple of landslides in 2013, if I remember correctly, and I think that has to be where those landslides were. They were pretty pretty massive. So once the, uh, the ore is removed from here, um, it ultimately makes its way to a smelter near the south end of the Great Salt Lake. And, and your, um, the visible sign of it is the largest freestanding structure west of the Mississippi, the Kennecott uh, Smelter Smokestack, which is almost a quarter mile tall. So if you're driving west on I-80 from Salt Lake City, you're going to be driving along the south side, the south end, uh, side of the um, Great Salt Lake, and you can't miss that smelter smokestack as you're driving by. About 30 miles from Salt Lake City. One of the things that you know, is kind of interesting when you look at it, uh, these whole roads are steep in their own right, but that, and then they kind of fall off on the side. Um, I don't know what kind of guardrails they would have. I don't think there is any. 
and frankly, these huge trucks would just roll over it anyway. I, I don't know if there's ever been a one of the large trucks gone over the edge. You know, it's hard to imagine that over more than 100 years of operation, they wouldn't have had an accident like that. But if something like that were to happen, it would be unsurvivable. I mean, you, you think of one of those 300-ton <laughs> trucks going over the edge, and as steep as that is, they would probably be hitting 100, 120, 130 kilometers an hour before it got to the bottom. And by that time, it would be balled up and, yeah, there's no way you could survive that. So I don't know if any of those vehicles have ever crashed. I would hope not, but hard to imagine that over the century or so that this place has been in operation that something like that hasn't happened at least once. Particularly given the nearly year-round operation and 24 hours a day. It's a basically non-stop. So you think of the abuse these trucks take. They're basically operating 20 plus hours a day. And half or more of that time it's pushing out huge amounts of power to climb these roads. Uh, you know, I wonder, at $3 million a piece, um, they want, wouldn't want to replace them that often, but, you know, with that kind of abuse, they would pretty much have to replace them, at least the engines, at least rebuild them, which itself has to be a pretty expensive proposition. <clears throat> Periodically, you'll see, in addition to the large trucks on these roads, some smaller vehicles, and they look like toys. Like at the very bottom, center right, a little kind of white vehicle moving up the up the road. That's probably like SUV size. It looks like a, you know, an ant. So off to the center left, you can see kind of uh, the, where the road kind of snakes around on the inside of the, can the canyon, the pit, and um, it looks like there's some kind of building structures there. I guess that's, um, you know, like a headquarters or something like that. So backing out towards the end of this second flight, <clears throat> And I'll show you something as we get a little bit further back. Um, I tried to avoid overflying any operations, you know, um, just trying to be safe. So coming back uh, towards the bottom right corner, you'll see an area where there's like a series, an array of holes. Um, that's actually a little higher up in the right end edge. That's an area where they're like they're drilling and then they're going to put some explosives like AMFO in there to blast and then they'll come in with trucks and shovels to haul that stuff away. All right, so we're getting towards the end, uh, end of the second flight, end of the video. And I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching.